guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, and I have one of my favorite guests back on the line. It's none other than Hazard. What's up, Hazard? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I saw you streaming the other day. You're back to streaming regularly, by the way. A link to his YouTube channel will be in the description below, guys. And you were playing, like, the weirdest graveyard deck I've seen in a while. It's with Giant Skeleton. You also have the Double Wizard, the Ice Wiz, and the E Wiz in there. Tell us a little bit about the deck, and right now you're pretty high on ladder with it. You were like top three uh, when I saw you, so maybe it took a loss or two in the meantime, but still super high on ladder with it. How does this deck work? Do you think that Giant Skeleton has a chance at being meta? Um, I definitely think it does have a chance. It definitely only fits in in very kind of niche archetypes where it suits in really well. But with Graveyard, it's super tanky. It's super good at tank for the Graveyard. And a lot of times you find it like it's super good on defense, especially with Ice with NATO and stuff like that. So yeah, this deck okay. potentially has, has a place in the meta, funny enough. Wow, crazy. I never thought I'd see the day. It almost seems like you see that giant skeleton and it's automatically called an off-meta deck. And right <laughs> now it's still probably that way, but who knows? Who knows? You've had a lot of success with it. So uh, feel free to hop into a ladder match. We might have to do some editing because of wait time, guys, but uh, we'll see you when we hop into the first match here. Yeah. All right. All right. right on. I think right. I played this guy yesterday, and yesterday I was on a, a pretty big win streak, so... Maybe I'll win this one. We'll see. That's what what would you say? So is people are not used to. Ooh, so it looks like three muskies. So people are not used to necessarily uh, playing giant skeleton so much. You know, maybe in two v two. So like, w how are you playing this deck compared to other graveyard decks? Like, what are the key differences in your opinion? Um, you can really rely on the giant skeleton a lot on defense. Like when they have a big push, normally you're gonna use your poison on regular graveyard decks, but here you can kind of just play it down as i just did you know i know it'll get value against the bar but and yeah. he'll need to defend with it with other units as well so it should get a fairly fairly decent elixir trade mm -hmm. um and i could be wrong yeah. there he might be playing graveyard yeah no i think he's probably playing graveyard yeah uh could be yeah we'll see not bad poison value there get some shit damage on the tower yeah and all you that can't shit place, yeah you can't place anything else there so it is graveyard hits you opposite lane yeah, here we really have a lot of graveyard counters, which is super yeah. nice. Barbara, super versatile, as you all know, can tank for the graveyard. You can also just defend against the graveyard and pretty much anything else in the game, realistically. Yeah. So, yeah. Is this the deck where you find, like, most of your big graveyard, most of your big tower down uh, moments come in double elixir or single elixir, or is it all just totally match dependent? Um, Definitely mostly in double elixir, okay. even sometimes in overtime, but, like, you know, I had the one match against a P.E.K.K.A. deck yesterday when they went a little bit aggressive with like a minute left in overtime. Mm -hmm. And I was able to take basically like 1500 off their tower just with one big ending push. Gotcha. So, you know, it definitely is like a fairly, fairly counter push heavy deck. Okay. And I noticed that the two times you played Giant Skeleton so far in this match has been behind the King Tower. Is that mm -hmm. something that you find yourself doing a lot? Like what percentage would you say like on average you're playing Giant Skeleton at the bridge versus behind the King Tower? It's definitely matchup dependent. Like with a deck like his right now, it's kind of hard for my giant skeleton to get value if I just play at the bridge because he's got so many counters to it. He's got like the bar butt and stuff like that. Yeah. But normally, like people don't have very good giant skeleton counters, so if they have to defend, and it looks like we might have just lost Hazard there, but we can still see the match, which is good. <laughs> so I'll take over by play by play until he comes back. Hazard, if you can hear me. We lost you on voice. But he's going in with the graveyard right now. Giant Skeleton, Barbarian Barrel to tank as well. Looks like this graveyard is going to get uh, some connection. Even Giant Skeleton might get to the tower here for him. The opponent NATO's away, but not before like six skeletons are on that tower. So a really nice connection here for Hazard. We'll get Hazard back on voice, by the way, guys, uh, in between matches here. So let's hope he can take away this victory. So a bar putt kind of resetting for the opponent here. And again, Giant Skeleton played aggressively there for Hazard the Bridge. And the, the thing that he was mentioning about Giant Skeleton, right, is that it's it's such a lane clogger. Like, if you're the opponent right now, what do you do? You can't really play much. And, hey, sorry, yeah. I'm back. I was oh. commentating through that, but my oh, no worries, actually no worries. lost connection, so we're <laughs> well, back. At least yeah. your game didn't lose connection there, so there yeah, we go. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how that happens. Maybe my Ethernet cord just messed up or something, but, oh. but we're back. It's all good, so you got to be feeling pretty good about this. He had like a kind of an emergency barb hut in the back there, and you do a good yeah, job. Yeah, this is playing super defensively right now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he kind of has to, mm -hmm. but this is going to get a lot of damage from him right now. Um, yeah, but I still feel like that offensive poison was 
was justified in that you know he only is 600 damage left on his tower mm -hmm. so i'm almost i'm almost winning but we're not quite there yet this might be a really dumb question hazard but you go in but i'm not afraid of dumb questions here on the channel I ask them all the time yeah. so you go in with a graveyard there uh oh man both of you oh, okay i'll let you handle this first <laughs> all right yeah i can't even concentrate on my right. questions let alone you oh no 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 you barely got through. oh man that's, that's gonna, gonna do like it like one tick yeah Oh no! <sighs> ah, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and hop into match number two, and hopefully we can get a dub there. All right, we're all in. right. Here we go, guys. Into the match against Adrian P ninety eight. Mm hmm. Um, we'll starting off, I've got a bit of a weird starting hand. I've got Barbro, which I'll probably cycle, but then I also have Graveyard Poison and Giant Skeleton next card. So bit awkward the, the question i wanted to ask is hazard is sometimes i notice with pro graveyard players such as yourself and the guy you were just playing is that they'll they'll place the graveyard down like surprisingly early like e even before a tank is guaranteed to have crossed over the bridge why is it so early on the graveyard sometimes um it really just depends on situations but sometimes it's good for the graveyard to tank for your support troops okay and sometimes it's just like you don't want a leak elixir or you want to be able to kind of surprise them if you know they don't have as much elixir and you know it's going to be harder for them to defend okay you just kind of want to play it early i mean normally you want to tank for it but okay. it kind of just depends on your elixir their elixir like what they have in cycle for it obviously if they have no counters in cycle it's a pretty risk free play to play it early mm -hmm. so yeah. with a deck like this i'm imagining that you rarely if ever use like a naked graveyard solo um yeah it's pretty rare here i have a pretty awkward cycle so i'm actually going to go in for a graveyard push and help the Mega Minion uh, clear up that baby dragon there. Okay. Um, and I should, I don't know, I should have like giant skills in this. Yeah. Or I was just, you was that. Bit of a strange cycle here. Okay. But, you know, we should be fine going to double. Yep. And I think I'm losing you on voice. Oh. Uh, okay, no, I got you, I got you, I got you. All right. Okay, okay. Cool. We're back. Nice. All right, yeah, so, so the first golem push, and here you go. You giant skeleton in the back, same lane. Is that generally mm -hmm. standard procedure? Yeah, sometimes you can play it at the bridge if they have like other support troops down, or especially if you have other support troops and you want to tank for those. But there, you know, I had nothing else going on, so giant skeleton in the back is just a fine play. Okay. Is there ever a circumstance with this type of deck that you would hit like bar barrel graveyard opposite lane when they drop a golem, or do you just want to start focus on the the lane they're coming in first? Um, normally I would focus on the lane they're coming in, uh, just because giant skeletons can get so much counter push value. That's true. So, okay. So pretty easy defense here. It looks like you're just comboing the NATO with the dying giant skeleton most of the time. Yeah, and actually I am going for a little bit of a push here. Okay. Um, I thought he would play Lumberjack a bit earlier, so I didn't go for Graveyard immediately. But okay. I still should have pretty good offensive value. He's got like no elixir here. Yeah, I so. think if you can keep these this Mega Mini alive, it'd be huge, I think. Yeah. Don't think it'll connect to tower, but yeah. I'm up a lot of elixir here. Yeah, you are. Nice. Oh, you and... know... Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you you yeah. know, in CRL, we always see that stat. We always hear that stat like 10 times a stream about like how much elixir did these people leak. It, what is your uh, kind of philosophy on leaking elixir? Is it that big of a deal? I noticed that you did it in, the, uh, in, in several matches, like just here and there, not a ton, but... Um, it just depends on cycle, honestly. Yeah. Um, is it worth it, basically, sometimes, just eating a little bit of elixir in, in order yes, to... Yes, sometimes, sometimes it is completely worth it. Like, okay. if you have to wait maybe, like, a second to get a graveyard down, and you know they have a graveyard counter in hand, mm -hmm. like, it can be good to, you know, just wait on that. Okay. Make sure that, you know, it's out of cycle. Yeah. And here you go, right into another graveyard push, because you had the, what, the surviving Mega Minion, I think, from that push. But yeah. here we go. The Giant Skeleton down. And I'll be able to NATO everything in the Giant Skeleton Bomb as well. So yeah. That should get pretty good <laughs> another, jack, but. another of the power of the uh, the Giant Skeleton there. Now you just got to yes. deal with this. This will be a little tricky, but I should be fine. If I can get a Giant Skeleton. He was, is, as long as Ewiz doesn't take off, okay. Nice, there, we there we go. Nice, nice. And he NATOs it back, which is probably a little bit too late for him. Yeah, he probably didn't think I was able to get my giant skeleton down. I could yeah. have played my ice was there, but I knew that would have just died, so. Yeah. All right, so things are looking good here. I don't want to jinx you. <laughs> they are. Um, 
Yeah, good thing the giant skeleton bomb killed the baby dragon there. Maybe Ice Whistle Splash. Nice, it did splash on the tower. So he's definitely going to go in here with this raged barb, especially as he's in poison range now. So mm -hmm. yeah. I just have to make so, sure. Yeah, so GG to Hazard, pretty much. Just pretty much. As as I'm going to actually keep up the pressure. He's going to have the lightning here, but I'm just going to pull it to King Tower, yep. get no damage, and then, yeah, there we Boom. go. There Gee. it is. Do you like a total random question? But since you just did that, GG first of all. But since you just nated that that golem to the tower, is that something that you do? Why don't you do that earlier against golem? Just because of like the golemites and the strength of the support cards, basically. If you do it earlier, even if you have a giant skeleton down, the support troops can just pretty much run through it and get a bunch of chip damage on the tower. Gotcha. There's normally a fairly good double elixir play if they have like a a naked golem that's kind of like unsupported. And you just have the opportunity to. But I find that against Golem, they normally get so much, like, they normally just have so much more elixir than you. So they can play it in the back and build up so much. You know, it's normally yeah. safer just to just to wait. Sounds good, man. Well, let's go into match number three and uh, make this a winning video. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Be right back, guys. You still got there yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, no, though. I don't know. Oh, we'll here we go. Yeah. All right, guys. We're into the next match here going against this guy. Libinway, something like that. Libinway. We'll go with it. Probably a bunch of that. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. So if you don't have, do you have ice? You don't have ice wizard in your starting hand. I have so. ice wizard next, but now okay. I have it. And bar barrel, is that like, I noticed that some, some pros cycle bar barrel like behind their, their king tower. Some people do it in the, in the back corner. Some people do it at the river. It's a small question, but do you just do it at the bridge to force a response out of your opponent? Yeah, I personally like doing it at the river, because most likely if they're not playing, then they have a pretty awkward starting hand. So it's like, if I can force something out of them and get a hit on the tower, which I did, it's just super useful. Yeah, and he starts out with a baby dragon, so another golem deck. Yay! We actually have yeah. a really good uh, replay for you guys, a P.E.K.K.A. Balloon Mirror Match, which is really interesting and uh, really an epic match that we'll show you guys after this match. So hopefully we can get another dub here. Uh... Lumberjack at the bridge. And at this point, are you just waiting him for to hopefully drop another troop, which he's obviously not? I think I'm just going to have to NATO it anyways, yeah. because that's super hard to defend. Yeah, you can't deal. some really good value with Rage here, um, but hopefully I can pull it opposite lane. Uh, I can pull the Mega Minion, but I can't pull the E-Drag, although, you know, that was fairly solid. Yeah, you can handle it. Nice. Okay. okay. That was good. <laughs> I was really hoping that E-Drag would die there, which it did. Yeah. Super lucky. How do you feel about E-Drag? Do you think it's, you know, do you think it, it needs an emergency nerf before CRL World Finals? Or do you, are you yes, like okay with it? Or I how do. do you feel about it? Yeah. I mean, even statistically wise, it's got like a 65% win rate. And the second closest is Barbaro with 60. And then the third is like 55, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure which card that is. But, you know, it's just, it's super solid. It fits in almost every deck. You know, you replace E-Wiz, you replace Mega Minion, you replace kind of Baby Dragon. Which are already super strong cards, but you know, it's just yeah. it's crazy. Now, what if you, you being a pro player, if you were in the World Finals and they didn't nerf E Drag, which I don't see them doing, uh, would you would you ban it every match, or is it that strong, or do you just like how would you go about that? I would either play it in most of my decks. Obviously, there are some decks that beat it. Where I would just ban it, you know. Okay, so if you're it's not like, playing it, you ban it. If you're playing it, then you just wait to see what your opponent's gonna do. Yeah, because realistically, someone's gonna want to ban it every match. Yeah. Or most likely. Yeah. It's just it's just a very polarizing card in that sense. Yeah. In terms of like ban card strategy, I'm just curious: is it is it an incredibly important, crucial, strat strategic play for you, or is it just something that you know you think about, but it all really comes down to who plays the better? Dex that really just depends on the player. I mean, if you yeah. look at someone like um, like OP Sam, for example, mm -hmm. all of his decks benefit very well, or at least they did in CRL, benefit very well from like Fireball Band and stuff like that. Because, you know, he loves Magic Archer, he loves Famous Tears, yeah. he loves Rascals. But um, for someone like me, I normally just try to catch my opponents off guard with bands. And it's like just doing something that I know they're not going to, you know, enjoy playing. And stuff yeah. Like out of the out of all the players in CRL, would you say just like totally an impossible question to answer? And, and GG there, w way to go! I noticed that in that matchup, by the way, that you went aggressively like during a golem pusher after they dropped a golem to block your giant skeleton, you started going in and double elixir time with just a bar barrel graveyard a couple times. Yeah, very similar to what I did in the last match to close off the game. In the mm -hmm. last match, obviously, it was a little bit different 
because you know the game was already over and he just had the desperation golem at the end so i graveyarded during that but normally when they golem like especially if you can graveyard during it all the support troops from the golem are just going to kind of walk behind it and you get an even more valuable giant skeleton nato okay cool uh so the next one here is against uh, look i like what you put in the, the description versus an op player who asked me not to say who he is was third at the time <laughs> all right so let's watch this one i gotta i gotta see this man all right so i'm gonna yeah. press play in uh three two one play and going Got back it. to my question here might be tough to answer but whatever out of all the crl players in eu and na that you kind of uh you hung out with and whatever that you dealt with the whole last season is how many of them would you what percentage of them would you say take bans like super seriously and how many of them just throw it in as like a psychological ploy and they don't really like you know care that much about it it really just depends on the team i mean you look at someone like complexity they have like three four analysts they're always changing up their bands mm -hmm. and you know they're super super interesting and i think for us in 2v2 we did different band pretty much every week and we caught a lot of teams off guard in that sense okay. um although you also look at someone like cloud nine or whatever who in 2v2 they banned nato basically like they banned nato i think 11 out of the 15 matches they were in wow so like you so know they just wanted to build their decks that they liked or whatever that that were that, Ness that NATO would do, do well against, and then they just stuck with it. Yeah, I would say it's probably wow. about. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this guy's crazy. I forgot this wasn't live match. I'm like, oh, be careful, Azur. <laughs> <Gotcha. laughs> yeah. All right. No, unfortunately, the Pekka did actually get a hit there. Although at this point, I knew his deck because I was watching JP stream earlier. I'm JP. I'm yeah, on yeah. If you all know him, and he actually lost to this guy because he was playing. He was playing Golem, so I'm sure you can imagine that was hard yeah for sure and like this is kind of a weird deck with a mirror in it and stuff but it's still a difficult deck to deal with especially with a freeze and mirror and balloon pekka so kind of walk us through your thought process at this point in the match um honestly at this point of the match i was fairly confident i knew he kind of had an awkward hand like he didn't really have much to play as you can see he's leaking a whole lot of elixir there just trying to find what the the right course of action is which you know with a deck like this where you have mirror and freeze that kind of means you're playing with six cards and you know it's it's very tough to i'm gonna pause right here at like point. 108 or so you're right. actually mid drop the giant skeleton on my screen yes. it looks like a floating giant skeleton how i have it right <laughs> yeah. now very yeah. weird uh but anyway so you cycled the e-wiz behind the king tower there and mm -hmm. you're going against a pekka so like what is, what right now is going through your mind are you graveyarding here or you can't um so here yeah. i don't think i'm graveyarding I mean, I definitely could have, but he has Dark Cowboy next card. Here, I'm just kind of applying pressure because I know that if I Giant Skill at the bridge, he can't balloon push. And if he balloon pushes opposite lane, I can just nade it to King Tower. And then both of my towers are pretty much even HP wise. So honestly, here, I'm, I'm pretty much chilling. You know, okay. I'm applying pressure when I need to, making it so he can't build that huge big push. So, like, making sure his Pekka goes down and stuff like that. And okay. I think he's actually going to end up mirror pecking here. Although oh, wow. All right, well, let's press play again. Three, two, one, go. Boom. Okay, so Giant Skeleton comes down, which is, again, kind of just, uh, you know, put him in an awkward situation again because he can't support anything with a Giant Skeleton there. He can't hit the opposite lane. Okay, yeah, and I was actually wrong there. He did NATO. As you can see, the NATO didn't really accomplish much. It just kind of allowed him to cycle to his Dark Album so he could defend the Graveyard, which, you know, the Graveyard was fairly kind of just apply pressure. He just played Balloon. He probably doesn't have as much Elixir, although he had a really good defense against that. And you had a pretty good defense on your of your own. Yeah, unfortunately the Balloon did get death damage, which is which is about 400 damage, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, so at this point in the match, 30 seconds left. I imagine this is a deck that you're, you're used to going in overtime a lot with, right? Yeah, no, you go into overtime most of the time, if not all of it. Okay. Um, you know, just because building that one push can be super hard, especially in, you know, tougher matchups. And there's the mirror pack I was talking about. So we immediately punish with Graveyard, okay. knowing that he only has Dark Elf and Mega Minion. I can poison that, and this should be a full bit of damage. And yeah, you get a lot of damage of like, there. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of like his last ditch effort. That was a super bad NATO on him. I can see why he was trying to do it, like looking at his hand. He really didn't have any other plays to make. And yep. he kind of has to go just balloon right into my push here, which is, you know, unfortunate for him, but obviously good for me. I can yeah. pull the balloon back. He double freeze there, you know, oh! just trying for desperation. Right? Yeah. But we got him with the NATO. And then this should be right here. Yeah, that was a really nice defensive stand. And I can tell now, this late into the video now, I'm starting to see how this deck is really, like, almost 
I don't want to say win in one push type deck, but it's kind of like that, where, where you have to just be super patient, it seems like, when you're playing it, you know? Yeah, you just have so much defensive value. Even at this yeah. point, I'm kind of making a little bit of elixir, making sure, like, I'm proceeding with caution, yeah. you know, which is very good with, like, especially when your main defense is six elixir, and you kind of combo with the three elixir nato, so that's nine elixir you need to have for yeah. their big push, so yeah. Well, Hazard, very, very well done. Uh, congratulations on pushing so high with such a crazy deck. It's it's definitely going to be a viewer favorite, I think. It's cool seeing... I just shared a Mega Knight graveyard deck, and now it's a Giant Skeleton graveyard deck. <laughs> so really cool to see these kind of a little bit unorthodox tanks paired with the graveyard. So thanks again for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was a ton of fun. No problem. Are you going to be like... Are you already... Uh, maybe you can't share, but are you already like contracted and signed for 2019 CRL? Or is that kind of up in the air right now? Or how does that work? Yes, I don't know how much I can discuss of that. Okay, but but you, you intend to participate to for season two? Yes. Okay. Well, we'll be, we'll be, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be looking forward to seeing. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for coming on, man. Guys, make sure you check out Hazard's player stats and profile. Thanks to StatsRail.com in the description below, along with his YouTube channel where he streams like right now at least like six nights a week. So go subscribe to Hazard. It's always really really enjoyable to watch him live stream. And uh, Haz, thanks again for coming on, man. Thank you so much. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well in the description below. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. And as always, take care, guys.